Hey, hey, hey. We are the Sons of Funk. I'm Mr. Rico, also known as Rico Mula. This here to my left here. Introduce yourself. I am known as Zo, the one and only. AK <laughs> the Bird, man. AK the Bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's your boy JP representing Sons of Funk SOF. And I am Dez Dynamic of Sons of Funk. 100. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, as our fans, you know, we, 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 we have been out of town and out of the States, in Europe, doing a few shows lately. So y'all been missing us. We'll, we always love you and we, we miss you guys. And we are back 100. We ready to give it to you like we used to. Mm-hmm. Soldier style. We're going to give it to you old. And we're going to give you something new. We're going to give it to you like uh, this southern way that we've learned since living out here in Bet- Good Baton Rouge. Your boy Boosie used to live down the street from me. He used to come over here and visit with me. We, we chopped it up about a few things, how to get down on stage. He gave me a few pointers on what, how to turn up out here in the South. <clears throat> and we're going to bring West Coast the flavor that we also grow up with, you know, dealing with people like MC Hammer, the Tonys, In Vogue, and, and the like. Yeah. We've been in the lab cooking up them hits for years, collabing with some of the biggest and the best. Uh, you know, give them that good, as we call it, the Southern Gumbo that we put on, all in the Sons of Funk and put on. And yeah. And so, you know, we've been traveling, doing a little, like, like you said, a little bit of touring. And uh, just having a good time, man. You know, we love this thing here. So. Yes, if you don't mind, tell the people what this whole interview is for. We want to kind of give y'all some updated history on the Sons of Funk, the past, present, and future. Yeah, that's basically what you're going to get. A lot of our fans want to know what happened to us, um, why we only did one album, and uh, basically, where you know, where did we go? What happened to the Sons of Funk? So we're going to kind of give y'all a little, you know, as much as we can, um, <clears throat> our, our uh, interpretation of what happened. Right, exactly. And, uh, you know, just go from there. So we're going to give y'all that, and we're going to give y'all the future, too, of course. You know, so um, this is really for the fans, all the people that's been hitting up all our old videos, right. all our old songs, saying uh, we love these, you know, man, we're pushing this side of you, that record. Uh, right. They hit that up every day. I got the hookup, yeah. that too. So all the people that's been looking and still hitting that song after all these years, you know, this is for all our fans. Yeah, yeah. right. So yeah, man, in the beginning, uh, you know, the whole thing started was um, basically fresh out of high school, or in kind of like a last year of high school, um, I wanted to start a group. And uh, that's when I met <clears throat> my high school friend, Lorenzo. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we used to uh, get together, you know, during school. We used to actually, I used to have him skipping school, <laughs> skipping <laughs> class, and we go to the studio, and uh, record songs, and um, they go to like the uh, Leo's music store, yeah. mess with all the keyboards and all the new yeah. sounds. And, you know, we couldn't afford it back then, but we always used to go in there and look around. So um, uh, shortly after that, um, my uh, cousin uh, Rico was actually in a, um, in a group with uh, one of my other cousins uh, named Mark. And uh, they had a, um, a group back then called uh, Destiny, and they had some uh, some minor success with that uh, project. And um, you know, um, I used to actually uh, tell my cousin Mark that I want to you know sing and all that, but he never took me serious. <laughs> He'd just be like, "All right, that's cool." And he'd play me music that he was working on, but never wanted to do nothing with me. <laughs> so. Um, uh, Rico, <laughs> Rico took interest. Like, hold on, you know, let me uh, let me go over here and see see what y'all are doing over here. And um, he came over to the house one day, and um, I, I actually did this song on the, um, on the keyboard. I kind of played it. It was kind of like a skeleton of a song. And uh, Rico came over and heard it, and he was blown away by the way it sounded. Yeah. He said, "Hey, man, let me take this home." And uh, I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to show you what I can do. So um, he came back the next day <laughs> and he had a hit to it called uh, Body Say Yes. And that was actually our first record yeah. 
as a group that we that we recorded. We, you know, this 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 group was called different names before we actually got to the song. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and uh, and the group at that time consists of uh, me, my brother uh, Greg, uh, Lorenzo, and then um, Rico. So, um, for many years, we've been trying to. Um, you know, record music and, and you know get songs, get record deals. And we had so many record deals that we was going in and out of. I think we was about like four or five. Four or five deep. Yeah, yeah four or five deep. Yeah. Record. Like you, know, you know, some some of the deals uh, we had like members um, um coming in. We had a member, we had a lead singer come in um, by the name of uh, Edward Scott <laughs> that um. <laughs> That, that we felt could really help us get to the next level because he was a real good singer. And um, he actually uh, taught us a lot. You know? He actually made us better as a group. Yeah. And um, we got a record deal, man. And he, as um, soon as we got the, the deal, you know what I'm saying, the record label was flying us down. Fuji people. Yeah, the Fuji's Columbia yeah. Records. Columbia 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 Records. Records. They flew us down, you know, to, to go, go in the studio and record. And, uh, you know, uh, Ed told us he didn't want to sing no more. Because <laughs> <laughs> his, uh, you know, his gospel uh, yeah, roots and gospel reasons. Roots, yeah. And uh, so that was cool. You know, we we uh, we could understand that. And then uh, later on, after a little bit after that, um, we all decided that we wanted to uh, move to LA because the Bay Area, where we are from, Bay, uh, Oakland, Richmond, California yeah. area is where we're from. The music game is kind of slow. And nobody would really help us, you know. There was a lot of uh, groups that that came out of Oakland, um, like Tony, 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 and Invo, and uh, MC Hammer. It was a lot of people, but you know, I ain't gonna name no names, but we couldn't get no help. <laughs> they want to help us. They want to help us. Sucker MCs. <laughs> but, um, but it's cool. We made our own way, and we decided we was gonna move down to LA, and. Um, one day, man, we packed up my little beat up Sanford and Son truck, <laughs> and the gear shift was broke. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it, it was falling in and out of gear. I had to hold the gear all the way to L.A. Yeah. And um, you know, we did that. We uh, came down to L.A. And the same day that we came down, uh, we met with Mr. Master P and got a record deal. The rest is history. Yeah. And um, there's a lot that happened after that. Yeah. <laughs> what Dad said was, was de definitely true. But before all that happened, I had uh, P had moved from New Orleans, Calio, uh, Rogers and Calio, New Orleans to Richmond, California. We had met at a very popular barbershop in uh, in Richmond called Mark's Barbershop. My buddy Alamo uh, introduced me to him because I had 15 minutes before I met P. I was looking at this picture and it was him and C. Murder and Silk and a, a whole No Limit guys that was there. I said, who's these guys? He said, that's Master P. He's from Florida. I said, okay, I could tell by the goals in his mouth. He wasn't from California. You know, brothers in Cali, we don't really support goals. But he was, nevertheless, he was cool. 15 minutes later, the brother walked in and he had such an enormous personality and he was such a great, great person when we met and we made a pact with each other well he made the pact with me he said hey man look i know you sing if ever you make it will you help me and if ever i make it i'll help you man i was so broke at the time i was sure <laughs> i had no lose. i told him uh yeah man, let's do this so he had got the game from e40's uncle st charles St. Charles told uh, Master Pete, look, you can go back home and win big. You can't do it here, because I've already showed E-40 how, how the game go out here in the West Coast. So, Pete packed up and went back home and blew up. Uh, he had started doing really well, started putting out a lot of in independent records. He started winning. Uh, it was such a funny story I heard. When Priority came to look for Pete, Pete thought it was the FBI. And P used to run around with two pistols on him. So he pulled the guns out on Duffy or Dave Weiner, one of the two. And he said, look, man, I'm not the people. I just want to give you a record deal. I'm from Priority Records. 
They gave P $250,000. P invested every dime back into the record company. Six months later, he had like five, between five and six million dollars. And it was history. We uh, went through our uh, thing, like Dad said, we drove to LA on a wing and a prayer. If y'all read a story, this is a true story I told about how God told us to go to LA, and we did, my cousin, they uh, they was like, we, we can't go, we gotta, we gotta get this money to put down or, or on a house that we trying to buy with our mom and everything. I was like, no, please just trust me, we gonna win. God then told me. We get down there and true enough, we gave him pushing inside you. I swear the man heard two, two seconds of the song and we were signing a record deal. Now let me show you the funny part about it though. Mm -hmm. About 45 minutes prior to us seeing P again, we had given the record to one of the Two of the heads of Party Records. They was him and the mm -hmm. Sounds like a hit. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Mm -hmm. you, you little boys get out of here. So we gave it to P. He knew it was a street hit. He knew pushing aside it was gonna be a classic. He immediately signed us. We all we got an enormous amount of money, more money than I have ever seen. Um and the funny thing of it is when they got word that P was trying to sign us. Then they wanted to say, hey, no, we want to sign. We was about to sign them. So they pulled Dez and I, Greg and Josh in the room and uh, and said, um, who y'all want to sign with? Well, hell, I, I didn't know them dudes. They did look like FBI to me. I knew the dude that looked like the street dude I grew up with, you know, Master P. I said, I'm with P. I don't know y'all like that. I ain't know at this still at this time I had not known P was a multi multi millionaire. He was a multi millionaire. Oh, was he rich? <laughs> so we called our cousin Tracy. What part of Tra uh, Texas Tracy was living in? East Texas. East Texas. Yeah. We called said Trey. You ever heard, you ever heard No Limit Records? And this is how he talked. Who 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 who? Yeah, boy, that's ain't the biggest record company in the world, boy. Is you crazy? I said, well, we just signed a deal with him. Cause you lying. Lotto. Cause Lotto. <laughs> you hit this one Lotto cut us. Cause send me a hundred dollars. <laughs> so it was gone, it was on from there. Man, literally, uh, he laughed at us. He said, hey man, here go some more money outside of the money I'm gonna give y'all. Y'all go uh, take that raggedy truck back home because I know it's y'all. Y'all only <laughs> went in LA with a truck looking like Sanford and son. Go back home with that and call us when you get back home. I'm gonna fly you to Baton Rouge, make you guys one of the biggest record uh, R&B groups that's out to this day. And he stood by his word and henceforth came uh, Sons of the Fall. And that was the best ride home ever. Oh my God, we had a taco party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanna give shouts out to my girl um, who uh, helped us, he, she held us down. She lived in the jungle. Um, you know who you are. I don't know if you want me to say your name, but um, you, shouts out to you. You know exactly who you are. And a uh, little short story again. When we came to LA, she let us stay with us. She only had a one bedroom, two sons, four grown men, and she let us stay with us. So we leaving out the out her house, going to uh, get this record deal. And it was some blood sitting on that red truck. Now we from Northern California. We ain't with the bloods and the crypt thing. That ain't our thing. You know, so uh, we said, hey, fellas, we just here to get a record deal. Okay. We know who you little boys is. We, basically, we know who you niggas is. We got y'all passed last night when y'all came through here. Y'all go handle your business. So they eased off the truck and we eased in. <laughs> we went and did what we had to do. So that's how we... Uh, You know, that's primarily how we got our first record deal. It's funny, man, just uh, everything was moving so fast, you know, with P, he, he gave, like I said, gave us the money. We immediately went to, flew to Texas. We started shooting uh, photos at, uh, what was it, Graphic? What that Graphic Place? Uh, get the name of a little graphic. Yeah. It was a little popular graphic Funky place. Fat, Funky Fats or something like that, one of the two. Yeah, um, yeah. And we went to uh, Houston to do that, closed down the, um, the mall. Then we get to shooting a video, pushing aside you. Um, it was one of the most exhilarating things that we did. Um, it was our very first real video shoot. We flew to Los Angeles. 
Um, we was we were in the limo, the whole thing. We had the assistants, and the, one of the uh, one of our assistants was a top model. And back in the like the early '80s or the '70s, late '70s, she was like Miss America, so I can't remember her name, but I remember her telling us uh, that who she was and what she did. And we started shooting the video. Um, uh, there was another member that was in our group because, as you see, the, the video was four of us. Uh, prior to that, it was five of us, and the member was Rest His Soul, Ricky J, which I truly think was one of the best singers and you know I had met until I met uh, JP. Appreciate um, that, bro. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, and Dez, you know, I always used to pump Dez and say, Dez, you are a lead singer, and I just had to trick him into thinking, you know, he was. He, I heard it. But I had to make him believe it. So those two are the, two of the best, best singers that I, I know. You know, I know some other other guys out there that can really blow. You know, and, uh, but in my group, these are the best guys. Um, Ricky J was a, <laughs> whew, he was a work at before, <laughs> work in progress. Where do you start? Huh? Yeah, where do I start with him? Um, first off, he did name the group Sons of Funk. Uh, we were gonna go with something else, and he said, "Nah, we ain't that." We the sons of funk. And I was like, okay, we're exactly. they're funky. Yeah, we funky. And it's done. It, it's done. <laughs> and that's who we were. Um, now I'm gonna give y'all the real. Rick was a beautiful person, but he had some um, you know, issues and skeletons, like we all do. Uh Rick got his money and he wanted to start doing he wanted to be a gentleman of leisure. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. With uh, the with the women, you know, so he got into a confrontation with some with some guys, some drug dealers in Richmond, California, where he from. Well, that's where I attribute to be one of the roughest places you can go to. Everybody got their own hoods, and everybody's rough. But Richmond, California, is probably one of the roughest places I've been around. So, um, uh, God bless his soul. Rick got into it. Expired at that time once he did, you know, but he did achieve his goal. He did uh, get a big record deal, uh, he got a lot of money, people saw who he was, and he's been recognized for his works. And he, he is the second person to sing Pushing Inside You on the record. And then, um, so um, we moved to Los Angeles, and so we all try still kind of, we, we still kind of mourning, going through our thing. And, Dez is, I, I attribute great to finding some of the best talent, you know, to, to accompany Sons of Funk. And somehow, I don't know how he met Jerry, but thank God he did. And I'm going to let them handle that. I, I don't even, I just know he was in the group. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, um, <clears throat> I got a call from um, actually um, Jerry's manager at the time. And um, he said, I had these I had these guys, man, I want you to uh, work with, you know, record them and do some songs. And um, <coughs> you know, he brought me up to, my, to the studio, you know, and uh, I met both the guys and uh, he played me their music. And I, and I, liked it. I was like, man, this sounds real good. And um, but I had taken real, real close, uh, paying attention to, to uh, Jay singing. I was like, man, uh, I gotta snatch this dude, man. <laughs> I was like, man, he gotta be in the sun's bump, man. I was like, you know, I liked his his boy too, but it was something about Jay. I was like, you know, man. Uh, and I told his manager, I was like, man, you know, I want to do some songs with him, but I want to do some songs with him on the sun's bump. I want to use Jay, so man, when I, I heard them vocals, man. He was such a talented, uh, talented dude, man. I mean, just pure singers. You got your singers and you got your yeah. pure singers. Yeah, yeah. And this boy right here is, Appreciate that. is, is the truth. You know? So um, we implemented Jay into the Sons of Funk. And uh, that was back in like 2000, More, 2001. 2001. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know um, don't know about Jay up until now because, um, you know, back then we didn't have like the, the, the use of internet and all this YouTube and Instagram and all that yeah. stuff. You know, but Jay's been an active member for you know for a years. long time, yeah. for years. Yeah. So it's like you might be new to y'all. You good and fresh, old I gotta <laughs> say, what sold me on Dez, man? When I heard the music, I remember 
pushing inside of you vaguely. It wasn't as big on the West Coast as down South, but it was that Isley Brothers style uh, and the ability to still be relevant with the young, fresh sound of the day. So that's what sold me on Dez. And just for the record, my boy, we wanted him to be down too, but he was in a position where he really wasn't able to, you know, I guess his passion for it wasn't there no more. So, like I said, I heard what the guys was doing, and I'm like, Dez, man, I, I'm more than honored to be down. And we started recording. Yeah, we, uh, we actually got, we got probably about three or four albums worth of stuff. Mm -hmm. Three or four yeah. albums, Sons of Funk albums. So the music you're hearing now is fresh and new, but you know you guys are gonna hear um, eventually. You're gonna hear some of the stuff that that we uh, should have been released on our second album. Right. 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 What do you got to say, young Doc? Uh, um, you know what I want to say is, I, I, it's a pleasure working with all these folks. It's like you know this is my family. Um, some of the greatest talents I've ever seen. And, you know, I grew up playing the piano in the church. And in church, you know, there's so many talented people, gospel singers, musicians. And uh, I must say, it's a certain magic that this group uh, possesses. And when we get together, it's just, we, it's like making, uh, making miracles. And um, everybody in this group is definitely a character. <laughs> a lot of behind it, you see behind the scenes stuff, oh man, you know, if you're in the studio with us, or you're on tour with us, um, we'll have you laughing, man, personalities, this guy here, is <laughs> as you can see, this. <laughs> yeah, this guy is like, man, this guy does the best, this dynamic does the best in person. <laughs> you know, one, man. Man, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know the best was is what he ain't thinking about. It. Right, right. That's, that's the, the ones he was yeah, off guard. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Jay, man, this dude is, is hilarious. Man, he's a brilliant, brilliant yeah. mind right here. Man. Thank you. I very wise that. guy right here. Man, very talented. And uh, me and myself, man, I, I soak it all in. And I just, I really enjoy this whole thing that we got have going. So yeah, man. Everybody wanted to you know the big question of you right. know what happened to us and you know why we uh, we stopped. We took a, a little hiatus. Yeah. Well, the real reason is is um, you know a big I think a big part of it is is we spent a lot of years together. You know, trying to get to the point to where we got a record deal. We actually started putting out music, and it was it was a long haul. You know, right out of, right out of high school we. We, it, it took a long time for us to get that deal. We spent, actually, uh, we used to live at my mom's house. We yeah. all kind of lived there. Yeah, yeah. So we was around each other, like, you know, every day. Seven. Like, yeah. seven, all day, day, every day. So we, um, you know, we was kind of fighting and fighting. And we was tired. And, you know, I remember times we used to go to radio stations and scale the walls. Trying to go to wall. This is our record. So it was a long fight. And I think um, we just kind of was just kind of tired. You know, everybody just wanted to kind of just take a break and live their life. You know, um, have kids, have a family. And um, yeah, you know, we we, we want to calm down a little bit, settle down, and you know, you know regroup. You know, you know, do some. You know. Kind of like, like the Beatles. I consider those like the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. The Black Beatles. Yeah, the Black Beatles. <laughs> the Black Beatles. <laughs> the Black Beatles. <laughs> they got some big ones out here in Louisiana. <laughs> they got Beatles. <laughs> so, and I think the thing about us is, um, you know, we're not like any, you know, like these new groups they have or whatever. We kind of like, I consider us like a like an Earth, Wind, and Fire or the Isley Brothers yeah, yeah. or whatever, the Commodores. We got our own sound. So we was able to come back at any given time because we had our own sound. Right. And nobody really could, could tap into it because they couldn't do it like us. Right. So it was, uh, it was easy for us to you know, transition because it's all good music. Yeah. All right, all right. yeah, we are not a manufactured group like put together by some producer and all that. We've been together. Yeah. We've found it. So it's like this, this is our core. 
and that's why we get the magic that we get from the music. And we're all musicians too. Yeah. You know, we're cut from the school, we're cut from the cloth of the era right. where everybody right. has to play a little something. Exactly. Everybody here can play guitar keys or something, you know what I mean? And Pete gave us so much money, we, we got lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, get this. Yeah, what you want to do? Lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, so, um, then, um, like Dad said, we all decided to, you know, do the family thing. And, you know, I came out to Louisiana, and it was just been a wonderful thing. You know, um, I learned a lot. Louisiana taught me a lot about people and how to love on people in a different, different manner, southern way and mannerism of loving people. You know, really good hospitality. Invite people in, there, feed them. If you don't eat my food, then I'm offended. You know, um, and then so. It was cold this way. I was laying in the bed, thinking about my cousins. And we used to always say, Bula Bula. And when I would call Dez, I say, Bula Bula. And he said, Bula Bula. And that meant we was finna get down. So I called Dez, I said, Bula Bula. <laughs> he responded. I said, When you coming, cuz? I'll be down here, man. I ain't had enough. Please, cuz come on down. I, I don't want LA to beat you up anymore. So, um, <clears throat> he came. He don't know. He came. I went on down to Mr. Gilmore property. And it's this old seance lady down there. I had to do a little voodoo. Shh, y'all don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, the voodoo got out there and cuz came on down. And literally, when he got here, uh, he didn't even unpack. He left his clothes, everything, all in the car and in the trunks and everything. He brought out his little music stuff and he hooked his speakers up. Pow! Just like before. I heard that first song. I went to the window like like I used to and I got the hum of them hooks. I cut, I got one. He, he hit that grin. Hit that grin, Dan, you do. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it's like the magic. It just... It just came back like this. It just clicked. I mean, it, the first day. I mean, when I came down, I was trying to relax. You know, I was trying to get some crawfish. <laughs> you know, I wanted to go to New Orleans and get some gumbo and all that. Man, we hurricane. As soon as that, man, day one. I mean, we turned that music on, man, and it was like, like it never stopped. Yeah. It's like we just went back. We just went back in time, like that. Right. You know, that was that was that was the beginning of. What y'all hear now? Yeah. <laughs> and OJ came like a couple of weeks later. Yeah. And Cuz came. And Funk is back. We here to show you youngsters how to get it. Right. Yeah, but it's on tighten up on your vocals and your production. Boy, boy. You know what I'm saying? You know the fans always want to hear a little pushing. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, speaking of pushing, huh? you know, the new, the new song, the new version of pushing. Called inside of you, and you know, y'all give y'all showing so much love on that man. We got so many views right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, almost like, eight thousand and five or six days. Man, the new, you know, the new. I don't even want to do the old version because I'm promoting new. Yeah, right, 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 right. 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 you know, right. right. new version <laughs> inside of you <laughs> on YouTube. So it's going for real. So it's going for real. Hey, this your boy JP of Sons of Funk. I just want to say a special thank you to the fans. Y'all been down and loyal for years. I want to appreciate all of you who have um, gone on YouTube and looked up the new video and checked out our new singles. You can get it and inside of you. And um, also look for us on Instagram, The Real Sons of Funk. Look for us on Facebook, um, the official Sons of Funk fan page. And um, yeah, we're just going to keep loading y'all up with that good music. Is dynamic. We want to thank all the fans for sticking with us, uh, loving real music. You know, you know all those hits and when y'all coming back and you know what I'm saying we want to hear some some new some new pushing inside of you and all that. You know, that's why we doing it. We doing it for y'all, giving y'all fresh new stuff. You know, you know this time we want to do as many albums as we can. You know, right. we want to just keep putting them out.
y'all come check us out when we do these tours and these shows. Because if you've never seen the Sons of Funk before, if you like our music <laughs> and what you hear when you see us live, we turn up. <laughs> we give it our 100% our all. And it's like we put everything on the line, so y'all gonna love it. Come out, get a good treat, man. Come and meet us. Come holler at us. We real dudes, man. We real, right, real right. people. Right. Come holler at us. We gonna holler at you. You know what I'm saying? It's like our fans are like family. So. Yeah. I just wanted to say, um, move the boat line. <laughs> <laughs> See you at the show, sons. And if you want a Sons of Funk feature, hit us up. Yeah. Real Sons of Funk. All right. On Instagram, you know what I'm saying? We're giving out their features, man. Right, right. You know, Rick Ross, you know, Drake. Yeah, Jagged Drake. Edge, we know y'all need something. Come on, holla at Everybody, you know. Troop. Yeah, we, 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 we cut from the same coffee. Yeah. Y'all need something. We're going to bring y'all back. Yeah, we got them, them hooks and them beats. We yeah, got them y'all beats. need to let us know. There's a dynamic <laughs> on them trucks. Oh, yeah. There's no the hot one you did, uh, that one with, uh, Wiz Khalifa oh, and yeah, Tiger Mom. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get that. We, oh, we, all, we all do our, our little side yeah. thing. You know, yeah. I, know I, I like making the beats. You know, I, I did the Molly record with Wiz Khalifa and Tiger. Mm-hmm. You know, Young Money. Shout out to Young Money. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Tiger, Wiz, yeah, uh, Mom, did, Mom. Um, I Can't Feel My Legs with John yeah, Hart. John, uh, my uh, boy, uh, John Hart, you know, he had the big, uh, big song, Who Booty Is It? I did his next single. Uh, I can't feel my legs, you know, written by Howard, my boy Howard, produced by me. And, uh, you know, we, we collabing with everybody, you know what I'm saying? Right. Shout out to my boy, Too Short. Right, right. Uh, right. Clyde Carson. Short. Short. Clyde Carson. Clyde Carson. Clyde Carson. Clyde. Right. Yes, we also short, blessed short. our album. Right. You know what I'm saying? Both of them blessed it, you know. Right, right. right. Young, yeah. young, young, young niggas with money. We got something real special coming Level. for y'all with uh, Too Short and us. Oh, yeah. For the ladies, for the streets. Yes, sir. Y'all want to bless them with a little song before we leave? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all know this one. Sure feels damn good to me when I'm pushing inside of you. I can't explain the way it feels. All I want to do is be with you. It sure feels damn good to me when I'm pushing inside of you. Pushing inside of you. I can't explain the way it feels. All I want to do is be with you.